Okay, we are all set. Okay, well, let's go ahead and uh, call the meeting to order then. Uh, I'm Bob Leggett. I'm the vice chair of the Board of Zoning Appeals. Um, as you heard John say, who, John Fox, who's uh, on Zoom with us and is the chair, uh, he's got the flu, so couldn't attend in person today. And we also have Janet Gorski and Ed Williams. So with four of about five board members present, uh, we do have a quorum. Um, also present is uh, Tyler New Newman, our zoning administrator for the town, and he will act as secretary for this meeting. Tyler, has an notification of this meeting been properly posted? Yes, sir, it has. Thank you. Um, our first order uh, will be to approve our meeting minutes from the September 6, 2022 meeting. Do you have any discussion of those minutes? Have no, approved. Sure. Second. Yeah, good. Minutes are approved. Was that unanimously? Yes. Um, so we would now move to the hearing um, of variance number 179, applicant being the club at Cedric Island and the address of 1701 Longden Drive. Before we hear testimony from the applicants, the zoning administrator will provide us with an overview of this request. Uh, Mr. Newman, do you promise the testimony you're about to present is true and accurate to the best of your knowledge? Yes, sir, I do. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Um, so as uh, Chairman or Vice Chairman Leggett stated, uh, the uh, subject property is 1701 Long Bend Drive, which I have uh, pulled up on the screen here currently. This is the uh, Seabrook Island Racket Club property. I believe um, most of us are, are familiar <coughs> Um, with the property, the specific variances that are being requested is uh, first a variance from DSO section 2.5 B1C uh, fence material. Uh, and the second variance that's being requested is from uh, DSO section 2.5 B1G, which is related to fence height. Uh, the purpose of this request is to, one, allow the use of chain link material for the construction of fencing associated with four proposed pickleball courts, and second, to allow the construction of eight-foot-tall fencing to surround the four proposed pickleball courts. Um, I'll now provide an overview of uh, kind of how we got to this point. The town uh, received variance application number 179 from the club at Seabrook Island. Um, moving forward, I will refer to them as the applicant. Uh, the applicant is requesting two variances related to fence height and fence material in association with the construction of four new pickleball courts at the Seabrook Island Racket Club. Uh, back on August 30th of 2022, the town received a zoning permit application for phase 1B improvements at the Seabrook Island Racket Club. Um, this phase of improvements included construction of four pickleball courts, two bocce ball courts, concrete sidewalks, a fire pit area with seating, and associated landscape and irrigation improvements. While reviewing the submittal on August 31st, 2022, the town zoning administrator noted that the proposed eight foot tall chain link fencing associated with the proposed pickleball courts was in violation of the DSO requirements related to fence and height material. And so this is just a property zoning report from our GIS that highlights that the properties uh, zoned RC. Uh, beneath that, I included a snip of the uh, applicable um, uh, design requirements for uh, the RC zoning district. You'll see that they've got a 30-foot uh, parking setback and a 20-foot building setback, which would apply to the uh, bocce ball courts in question with those being uh, structures. Those are the only two setbacks on this property that would be applicable to the um, request in front of us. Um, also note that there is no 
uh, lot coverage requirement for um, the RC zoning districts. Uh, here I've highlighted, I took a snip from the DSO and highlighted the specific uh, sections that we're looking at here in 2.5 B1C and 2.5 B1G. Uh, DSO section 2.5 B1C states that fences must be made of stucco, cypress, pressure treated wood, wood composite, iron, powder coated aluminum or similar materials. And then goes on to state that barbed wire, concertina wire, razor wire, chain link, poultry wire, and vinyl are strictly prohibited. Additionally, DSO section 2.5 B1G states that no wall or fence shall be taller than six feet in height, measured from the finished elevation at its base to the highest point of the wall or fence. The subject property is currently zoned RC, recreation, and open air recreation is an approved conditional use uh, on the property per DSO section 9.4 I1. The condition associated with an unlighted athletic court is that unlighted athletic court shall provide a level B buffer adjacent to any residential zoning boundary. It should be noted that this condition is not applicable to the approval in question because the proposed pickleball courts are not directly adjacent to a residential uh, zoning district boundary. Therefore, the buffer is not required. Before I move forward, I'll just show you guys a few photos of the existing conditions uh, out there. These are photos that were provided by the applicant. And then I also went onto the site and took a few photos of the general area that we're talking about here. So I believe this site plan here shows the proposed, yeah, if you could zoom in on that hatched area in the top right, that's- This one? Yeah. Uh, yep, that's good. That's the way you got it there. Um, so based on the site plan, which we have pulled up here, um, submitted with the variance application, the proposed pickleball courts and associated improvements will comply with the 20 foot front setback from Seabrook Island Road and Long Bend Drive. Uh, per the applicant's parking summary provided on the plan set, uh, the addition of the four pickleball courts and two bocce ball courts will not result in the need for any additional parking on site. Uh, additionally, based on the plans provided with the submittal, the applicant is not proposing to remove any grand or heritage trees and the tree protection details outlined in the plans meet uh, DSO requirements. And I, I also ran that by our um, building and grounds uh, uh, manager, Robert here, and he is a certified arborist who verified that everything shown on the landscape plan is, is DSO compliant. Um, to allow for the construction of the proposed eight foot tall chain lake fencing surrounding the four proposed pickleball courts, the applicant is requesting the following variances from the DSO. Um, we, we ran through what's required for the DSO. And uh, again, their request is to allow the use of chain link material for the construction of fencing uh, associated with the four proposed pickleball courts and to allow the construction of eight foot tall fences to surround the four proposed pickleball courts. I'm sure the applicant will touch on this as well, but in their application, the uh, applicant states that they're requesting relief from the DSO requirements related to fence and height material for the following reasons. Uh, the property is the only racket sports facility for the club of Seabrook Island. Currently, there are 15 tennis courts and two pickleball courts, which each have 10 foot tall black vinyl chain link fencing and black windscreens. Additionally, the tennis and pickleball industries recommend fence height for tennis and pickleball courts of 10 feet or 12 feet, with 10 feet being the most common height. Uh, the applicant also notes that chain link fencing allows for 
uh, airflow across all courts. Uh, they go on to state that there are no other properties in the vicinity of the subject property that have court facilities like those located at the Seabrook Island Racket Club, that the application of the maximum fence height of six feet and the inability to use chain link fence material with screens would unreasonably restrict the applicant's ability to construct the courts to pickleball industry standards. The addition of the courts to the racket club will not be a detriment to adjacent property owners as the proposed improvements match the existing property use and add opportunities for increased member opportunity. Additionally, the applicant states that the adoption of the current development standards ordinance by the town of Seabrook Island, which does not address the height or materiality of pickleball and tennis industry standards, limits the ability of the racket club to construct additional courts that meet industry standards. And this hardship was not created by the racket club. Finally, the applicant states that the variance for the height and material of the fence will not allow the property to be used more profitably, but will allow the racket club to provide additional facilities to their members. Um, that concludes my report, but I will go on to uh, reiterate that as a matter of practice, the town zoning administrator does not typically provide a recommendation in favor of or in opposition to a variance application. In our opinion, these requests are best left to the Board of Zoning Appeals following a thorough review of the relevant facts, including the receipt of testimony from interested parties during the required public hearing. In granting a variance, state law permits the Board of Zoning Appeals to attach such conditions as the board may consider advisable to protect established property values in the surrounding area or to promote the public health, safety, or general welfare. Should the board vote to approve the variance request, staff would, staff would recommend in favor of attaching the following conditions. The approved variance shall apply to the site layout as shown on the site specific plan prepared by the applicant and reviewed by the Board of Zoning Appeals on December 28, 2022. Any modification to this site specific plan prior to the issuance of a zoning permit, with the exception of minor corrections and or modifications which conform to the requirements of the DSO shall require further review and approval by the Board of Zoning Appeals. The applicant shall prepare and submit to the zoning administrator an as-built survey prior to the issuance of a certificate of occupancy or within 30 days of passing the final inspection if no certificate of occupancy is required. The as-built survey shall be prepared and stamped by a professional land sur surveyor who is qualified to perform such services in the state of South Carolina. Um, finally, what I would like to reiterate is that in considering this request, uh, the board should be sure to uh, express how they find how they feel that the um, applicant has demonstrated that they meet each of the following conditions. That there are extraordinary conditions that apply to the property. Um, that these conditions do not generally apply to other properties in the vicinity that because of these conditions, the application of the ordinance to the particular piece of property would effectively prohibit or unreasonably restrict the utilization of the property, that the authorization of the variance will not be of substantial detriment to adjacent property or to the public good, and the character of the district will not be harmed by the granting of the variance. Um, the board should find that an owner, uh, that the owner is not entitled to relief from self-created or self-inflicted hardship. A claim of unnecessary hardship shall not be based on conditions created by the owner. And finally, the fact that the property may be used more profitably if variance is granted may not be considered as grounds for a variance. That concludes my presentation. Thank you, Tyler. Are there any questions for Tyler from board members? John, do you have any questions? I have one. At the present time, according to the DSO, there is no fence allowed there, correct? Uh, they could have a fence that's up to six feet tall, uh, and it, it, as long as it was constructed out of material that's allowed under the That DSO. isn't suitable for a pickleboard. <laughs> right, right. 
the current DSO standards don't match uh, the the tennis and and pickleball standards. Okay. Only that's, that's what I thought I was reading. <clears throat> The question I have is that all the fencing we're talking about goes around the external footprint of the court surface, not extended any further outward, correct? Correct. These will be just just directly like are, surrounding just the, like right, are. just like the existing courts. Yes, ma'am. That was my only question, too. Is, is so there essentially there where those... Like the one that's there now. I believe that these will be shorter than the ones that are there now, correct? They'll be shorter and um, just- Well, I'll be getting my ball out in the street. <laughs> <laughs> well, the sides, the sides are also uh, shorter and four feet for accessibility and the wood, so. Okay, thank you, Tyler. Thank you. Um, so uh, we will now have a presentation from the applicants. Um, whoever's going to speak, uh, please come up, uh, state your name and address for the record, please. Hi. My name is Donnie Kidani. I'm a landscape architect with the firm of the Nona Attacks in the Florida. Thank you. And do you promise the testimony you're about to present is true and accurate to the best of your knowledge? Yes, sir. Thank you. Go ahead. Hey, again, my name is Donnie Kidani. I'm a landscape architect with the firm in Jacksonville, Florida, Urban Love and Miller. We're architects, landscape architects, and land planners. And I uh, just want to thank everybody for uh, conducting this hearing so much for us in the middle of the holiday season. We appreciate it, the club appreciates that. So the project was uh, conceived uh, based out of the overwhelming need for pickleball at the Racket Club facility. There are two existing pickleball courts, and the staff is having to turn away members from play because there's simply not enough space for it. So the solution is how do we utilize the property to add four additional pickleball courts. As I said, my name is uh, Donnie Padani and I uh, work for a little bit Miller, a firm in Jacksonville, Florida. And um, we have been engaged by the club to master plan the property and a component in another is it's titled in the variance request phase 1B is the addition of to the wall courts and eight foot tall screens that are <clears throat> an integral part of those courts. So we are here today before you uh, requesting a variance from the two components that Tyler had already mentioned, the heights of the fence and the materials allowed for those fences. We believe that the uh, application, the strict application of the ordinance as it's, of the ordinance as it's written does in and of itself produce the hardship for the racket club. As I mentioned, there's a huge demand for a pickleball at the racket club. And the two courts that we currently, that the club currently has, will not facilitate the full realm of what the demand is requesting at the club. They're being turned away not only at the front desk, but also the online registrations, <coughs> which are hard to, hard to track and quantify. Um, if the member sees that a court's not available, then they just don't even. Uh, apply for that opening or apply for, for any other play. In addition, the uh, two pickleball courts will facilitate other aspects of the culture of pickleball. Um, it's a very social sport. Um, people, uh, professionals come and provide clinics. And then there's, of course, tournament play, which we're all familiar with the tournaments that are already uh, on the property for, uh, for, for tennis. And so there again, the, the only solution to provide these facilities for the members is to build four new courts with all of the components that incorporate uh, what a usable pickleball court is. Urban Lovett Miller uh, was founded in 2001 uh, by Russ Urban, Steve Lovett, and Tim Miller. We're a boutique firm of about 24 employees. Steve Lovett is the principal in charge of the project. I'm the lead landscape architect, and Jimmy Lasley is the lead architect of the project. And this, as I mentioned, this is an important project to us in the club. Steve and Jenny are attending the Zoom call as I speak. Existing conditions, uh, there are 15 play surface tennis courts and two pickleball courts, each with their own set of screens. Here's some photographs from the site um, of these existing tennis court screens and pickleball court screens. They're all made of uh, black vinyl coated chain link fence and 10 feet tall. 
And the reason, again, while we're here is because the DSO does not address this type of screen for, uh, for the courts. It addresses more the lines of perimeter fences and things viewed from the right way, and not that it will continue to uh, fit the ball or tennis court design. So really what we're asking for is to continue what we already have on site. These are a couple of sheets. I have two sheets from the hardscape uh, drawings that were presented to the town, illustrating the heights of the fence, black, vinyl coated, chain link, in, the, in the details of the screens. Um, again, eight feet tall, which is lower than what, the, what we have existing on site. So in summary, uh, we are doing this to meet that demand for pickleball. Um, and the DSO uh, states only certain conditions for fixings or screens. And the precedent is set uh, by the existing facilities. And we believe that, um, that the DSO in and of itself and the, and the fact that this is the only place on the island for the tennis club is extraordinary and exceptional condition particular to this piece of property. Um, the conditions don't apply to any other property in the vicinity. It's the only tennis and racket club facility on the island. Um, and because of these conditions, um, the application of the ordinance uh, would effectively prohibit or unreasonably restrict the utilization of the property. Um, so the, or the authorization of the variance will not be a substantial de detriment to the adjacent property or the public good. As a matter of fact, it will enhance the public good by providing the opportunity for more, more play. And the character of the district will not be harmed in the granting of this variance because we're asking for more court facilities on a court, a racket club property. So with that, uh, we appreciate your consideration and request your approval for this variance. Okay, are there any questions from board members? Any questions, John? I do, I'll, I'll go ahead and ask one. <clears throat> Would you like to have a higher fence or is this what you want? Um, eight feet is uh, appropriate because we're going to get the oak tree canopy and we're limiting the fence to eight feet because of the overhead. So it's not quite as tall as what you got over there. Correct. Okay. Tyler, do you have any questions? I have no rebuttal. Okay. Thank you, sir. I will now open the hearing for public comment. Is there anyone who wishes to speak in favor of this request here or Zoom? Okay. Is there anyone who wishes to speak in opposition to this request? Okay, hearing none, uh, there'll be no further testimony. Uh, we will close the public hearing at this time. Um, um, Tyler has already uh, given us a brief overview of the criteria required by state law, which must be considered by the board. And so we will now uh, have uh, a board discussion. I move to approve. Okay, we have uh, we, have, we a have to discuss the criteria. We, we need to uh, compare it to the criteria. Uh, so we like to handle that. John, do you want to do that or? Yeah, yeah. I, I was I was going to say we need to discuss it before we do any voting. And the first one is extraordinary conditions. Well, we have a tennis center. You can't build a tennis facility at. As if you can't put a fence up, which is pretty extraordinary. And I would say that I think this was merely overlooked when the DSL was done. Nobody thinking of this situation. That it, otherwise, it probably would have been taken care of. Um, oh, wait a minute, I lost my place here. Um, the other. It's really just expanding the facility. I don't think it's a, well, let's go down to the other property. It doesn't affect any other property. Nobody else is, uh, is uh, building a tennis court. It, if we don't give them a fence, they won't be able to build more courts. Balls will be going all over the place. So it does affect the use of their property. And it is for the public good. It's more 
recreational facilities. They didn't create this problem because they've already been building tennis court on that tract of land with with fences. And uh, I don't see where they're going to make a whole lot out of it. I mean, it's affecting the dues whether they have a court or not. So, um, as far as I can see, that meets the criteria. Thank you. I agree with what John said. Um, I'd also note that if the fencing isn't appropriate for the sport, it can create a safety issue. And if this is the, the type of fencing that's standardized and, and approved for the by the tennis and pickleball industry, it seems to me that that means it's the safest and the best material to use in the construction. And we're not experts in that, so I think it's better to go along with that. Um, and therefore, that's a to me that's an even additional reason to approve the modification to, to approve the variance. Um, I think it's better for the overall appearance of the whole racket club center because then all the fencing is consistent. And it, so it has the same look and character. Thank you. And, and, and John, just so that just so that I made sure that I heard you right there for variance criteria number number two, are we essentially stating that they are the only racket and tennis club on the on the island? Therefore, it's a unique circumstance to. These to would be problem. the only tennis courts built on the island. I don't think you have a lot you can put one on any place. Right. <laughs> any further discussion? Can I have a motion then? I uh, move that we uh, approve variant submission number 179 with all, do you want to include all the, sure, with all the all. Recommend, additional rec recommendations that the town zoning administrator has already mentioned that are in the uh, uh, submitted with the application? Second. And a second. Okay, all in favor? Raise your hand. Opposed? It passes unanimously by a vote of four to zero. And with that, um, can I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Mm -hmm. Second. Thank you. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. One thing that I did want to acknowledge while we're all still sitting here is Janet. Thank you for your service. Best of luck to you and your thank you. Thank you. future endeavors. <laughs> and I also, I'm not sure if you all are aware, but we do have um, Elizabeth Palmer will be stepping on as the new and if there's BZA anything I can do to be helpful, go on and focus just calling. You know where I am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much.